I would say by the end of the century, if we do not take action on climate change, the damage from climate change will surpass twice as much as all the wealth that exists in the world today. My book, The Uninhabitable Earth, is a sort of big picture look at climate change and where we are and where we're headed. Not just what the science is telling us, but what it will mean for the way we live on this planet. Because scientists have often talked about two degrees Celsius of warming as the threshold of catastrophe, it's meant that most of the public didn't appreciate that that threshold, two degrees, was really a floor of warming rather than a ceiling. We're now on track to up for about four, 4.3 degrees Celsius warming by the end of the century. And yet we had very, done very little storytelling about what that would mean to be anywhere between 2 and 4.3 degrees. So my book is focused on that question. Just to give you a sense of what that would mean, conventional wisdom would suggest that at 4 degrees, we will have hundreds of millions of climate refugees. We will have a global GDP that's about 30% lower than it would be without climate change. We would have places in the world that would be hit simultaneously by six climate change disasters at once. We would have lost all of the world's ice. That would happen over centuries, but it would have been baked in by the end of the century, which would mean eventually seas could be 260 feet higher. Um, this is a truly, truly catastrophic portrait of what life on the planet would be like, and that is where we're headed now. I mean, I'm scared, honestly, of what the present holds. I mean, when you see, you know, what happened in 2018, the global heat wave, unprecedented heat wave, all of the hurricanes, all of the wildfires, more than a million acres in California burning, if we get to 4.3 degrees at the end of the century, we're likely to see 64 times more acres being burned in California than were burned last year in the record-setting season. But even now, that damage is devastating, horrifying. Right now in Australia, we're seeing simultaneously they're dealing with epic flooding and an epic heat wave where people are dying and the crops are failing. Um, we're already in this future. We just haven't adjusted our sense of um, the world and what it contains yet. Because people feel like if I'm eating less meat or if I'm taking a few flights fewer a year, that I've done my part, but in fact, that impact is so trivial compared to the impact that a transformed politics can have, and that's really what we need to be focusing on. Keep in mind that when you think about the scale of these impacts, which are truly dramatic, truly enormous, really those are um, reflections of how much power we as, as humanity have over the climate. So these are not outcomes that are already inevitable, and the fact that they are possible is a sign of just how much control we actually have over the future of the planet. If we wanted to avert all these outcomes right now and we collectively mobilized and decided that we were going to devote ourselves to that action as a, you know, as a planet, we could do that easily. The UN says that just by 2050, we're likely to have 200 million climate refugees and that we could have as many as 1 billion climate refugees, which is as many people as live in North and South America combined today. I think those numbers are a bit inflated, but even if you take the very low end, you see from what happened in Europe in the aftermath of the Syrian civil war and the Syrian refugee crisis, that the influx of just one million refugees completely transformed an entire continent's politics. And through that, the global geopolitics, it seems hard to believe from this vantage that if we get to four or five degrees Celsius of warming, that there'll still be people who are happily married and having kids and excited about the future. But inevitably, it will be the case. It may also just be the case that parts of the, many big parts of the planet will be uninhabitable and we'll be dealing with huge refugee crises, crises. But we've passed through horror shows before and I think that humanity will endure. The question is in what form and how civilization will be reshaped by these forces.